Hi, I'm Neil Snyder. Thanks for joining me. This is the first ever of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Today is January the 10th, and uh, I'll do these things periodically, but today I want to talk to you about several things that are current and things you need to know about. And I'll begin by giving you some factual information, then I'll say a few words about it. Um, the unemployment rate in January 2008 was less than 5%. The unemployment rate in January of 2012 is 8.5%. But we know that 8.5% uh, understates the unemployment problem because a lot of people who don't have jobs are not looking for work. And with the, the continued extension of unemployment benefits, um, the incentive to uh, find a job if you don't already have one is not as great as it should be. The um, federal government uh, hiring uh, employment in the federal government in, has increased under President Obama's administration by 11.79 percent. That is to say that there are 11.79 percent more federal government employees now than there were when he took office. In the private sector, uh, the unemployment has fallen by 6.6 percent. So what we've seen is a, a, uh, an increase, and a fairly healthy increase for that matter, in federal government employment and a substantial decrease in private sector employment under Obama's administration. Um, the percent of people who paid no federal income taxes when Obama took office was 36.3%. That's a very high percentage. 36.3% of, of, of people in the United States paid no federal income taxes when President Obama took office. Uh, under his administration, that number has climbed to uh, 51 or 52%. Some say 51, some say 52, but it's right there at that level. In other words, a substantial increase, there has been a substantial increase in the percentage of people in this country who pay no federal income taxes. Now, we're told uh, by the Obama administration that um, that's really not a problem because they do pay uh, employment taxes, which every wage earner pays. So the point is that that uh, most people in this country today, literally more than 50% of the people in this country today, pay nothing, nothing for our defense, for the Justice Department, for any program at the federal level. They pay zero, nothing. Um, that's as close as you'll ever get to a socialist state without calling it that. But that's where we're heading. Uh, the deficit to GDP at the time Obama took office was 3.21%. The deficit to GDP ratio today is 6.96%. <clears throat> Debt to GDP when Obama took office was 69%. Today it's more than 100%. Just to give you some idea uh, how, how problematic that is, the uh, rating agency, Standard & Poor's in particular, uh, begins to have questions about a country's ability to repay its debt when debt to GDP reaches 60 percent. So it was already too high when President Obama took office, but it's much higher now. And uh, the Standard & Poor's downgrade that uh, we saw this summer probably isn't the first one of those we're going to see if we continue on this trajectory. Um, the poverty rate in the United States when President Obama took office is 13.2%, uh, was 13.2%. Today it's 15.1%. Now, I share that information with you, but I've got to tell you, the, uh, the way they calculate the poverty rate in this country is very, very suspicious as far as I'm concerned. And I say that because a lot of the people who are on food stamps and a lot of the people who are getting all kinds of federal aid, I see them in the grocery stores. If you go to the grocery stores, you see them too. They have carts full of food. They're grossly overweight. And then they walk up and, uh, and pay for their baskets of food, their buggies of food, with food stamps. Now, I've got to tell you, 
there's something very peculiar to me in a nation when people who are grossly overweight are said to be living in poverty. Uh, you can't be grossly overweight and living in poverty. You may be eating badly, but you're not, you're not in poverty. I've been to foreign countries where uh, poverty is, is a real problem, and trust me, the people who are in poverty in those countries are skinny as a rail, and they can barely move. It's sad to see. You've seen pictures of them on television if you have never been to one of those countries. But the point is, under Obama's administration, poverty uh, has gone up and not down. And again, I have some real problems with the way we calculate poverty. Um, and the percentage of people on food stamps in the United States when President Obama took office was 12 percent. It's now 15 percent. Again, leading us more and more down the path toward the socialist government that I think President Obama prefers. Um, I bring this up because we're in the middle of a presidential election campaign. It's probably, and I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think probably is the right word. As far as I'm concerned, it's the most important presidential election of my lifetime because President Obama has done things that I would have never dreamed possible, and we've let him get away with it. Uh, we, he shoved uh, Obamacare down the throats of the Congress. Uh, it's still in the courts today. Those issues, those things should have never happened, but they did. Okay, in today's headlines, Michelle Obama has said she's tired of the angry black woman stereotype. Well, let's examine this. She's a black woman. Is that, a, is, that, is that issue in doubt? No, it's not. She's a woman. Is that issue in doubt? I don't think so. Is she angry? Well, if you judge by what people say about her, if you judge by the things she said about this nation before her husband was elected, uh, was elected president, I think you can say that Michelle Obama is an angry black woman. If she doesn't like that stereotype, then drop the black and just say she's an angry woman. But she's angry. You know, I'm angry too. I'm angry that we elected him president of the United States. I'm angry that she's the first lady. It has nothing to do with her race. It has to do with the quality of his leadership. And I should tell you, when I use the, lead, the word leadership in connection with Obama, I'm really going too far. What he's doing is not leadership. What he's doing is... Uh, is uh, dictatorship. It's, it's, it's as if in his world, the Congress doesn't even matter. And I'm being kind. I'm not the only one to pick up on this. Another headline today, voters by a two to one margin fear the re-election of President Obama more than anything else in the year 2012. I fear that too. I wrote a book about it. The title of the book, if you voted for Obama in 2008 to prove you're not a racist, you need to vote for someone else in 2012 to prove you're not an idiot. That book is available in, in paperback and as an ebook. You can go to Amazon and get either one of them. I urge you to get that book and read it if you haven't already read it because that book lays out the facts for any thinking person to consider. And I use the word thinking there because the truth is, uh, most people who support Obama are not thinking people. They're just going to vote for him no matter what. Now, I'm not talking about whether they're intelligent or not. I'm talking about whether they're thinking or not. Thinking people are not going to vote for President Obama. Another issue. Um, today in, in Tehran, Iran, Tehran, Iran, another uh, nuclear scientist was killed in an assassination. Uh, a lot of you, you're reading a lot about that. Uh, if you read Snyder Talk, you'll read about it in tomorrow's Snyder Talk. I hope you're reading Snyder Talk, too, by the way, because it's loaded with information. It's in tomorrow's Snyder Talk. I got an email from a Snyder Talk reader, and he asked me, uh, who did it? Was it the U.S.? Was it, uh, was it Israel? Who was responsible for it? And then he asked me, was it right, or should, we have, should it have happened? And, and I responded this way. I said, number one, we don't know who did it. Now, the Iranians are saying it was the Israelis in, con in cooperation with the United States. But the truth is, we don't know. Uh, did Israel do it? 
They may have. I don't know. Did the U.S. do it? I don't know. We may have. Um, it could have been reformist in Iran. Uh, they are brutalized in Iran. Uh, they are very unhappy. Uh, but again, we don't know. Then his question about, uh, about whether it's right or wrong for this to happen. My response was this. Some say that we're heading toward a war with Iran. Well, I disagree with that. I think we're already in a war with Iran. Iran has made it clear that they intend to wipe Israel off the map. Uh, they have made it clear that Israel is the little Satan and we are, the U.S. is, the big Satan. And they're busily trying to develop missiles that can reach uh, the United States or our uh, bases in foreign countries. And they've done that. Uh, they're busily trying to create nuclear weapons. They have already let it be known that they intend to be at war with us. They've warned the U.S. Navy not to send our ships through the Strait of Hormuz, Hormuz again. Um, if those aren't acts of war, I don't know what they are. Now, in my mind, we are in the early phase of war with Iran. And in wartime situations, targeted killing is justified. Uh, what I'm saying is, I don't have a problem with this. Um, they do this kind of thing. All, in fact, they tried to kill uh, the Saudi, a Saudi uh, diplomat in Washington this past summer. They see us as their enemy. They've declared uh, openly that they're, they intend to wipe Israel off the map. If those aren't declarations of war, what are they? Let's just hope we don't have a full-scale war with Iran, because if we do, it could, be, it could be a dangerous thing. We may be heading in that direction. Honestly, I think we are. A few other comments. Occupy Wall Street. Who's responsible for Occupy Wall Street? Well, I'll tell you who's responsible for it. If not President Obama directly, his underlings and people who are going to support him. And they're doing it in response to the Tea Party. They're really going nowhere. They stand for nothing. Uh, but that is their best uh, shot at counteracting the influence of the Tea Party. And what have they shown us? They've shown us that there are a lot of people in this country who are surviving on the dole, who don't have anything better to do to, than camp out on public property. Um, what would you expect? When people are paid to do nothing, they have a lot of free time on their hands. People should not be paid to do nothing unless... They're somehow uh, disabled or, or unable to work for some reason. These people aren't disabled. They're not unable to work. They're just lazy people who are on the dole. Those are the people our tax dollars support. If we elect President Obama and we continue on this trajectory, he's going to destroy this nation. He's making headway already. Again, this is the first of uh, many to come, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Snyder Talk style. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon.